This is Twit. Uh, Christian Sanchez said, hi, Steve. Wondering if you have any thoughts on this Washington Post article's assertion that public Wi-Fi is safe. And he linked it to it. He said, I admit I clicked on it expecting to laugh at thoughtless misinformation. But the discussion in the comments turned me around. Is the near ubiquity of HTTPS enough to declare public Wi-Fi safe? What about man in the middle hijacking DNS? Longtime listener, big fan of the show. Keep up the good work. Sincerely, Christian. And I read the article, and it was written by somebody who really knows what they're talking about. And they they had the position that I do, which is, yes, there has been such a transformation since we were first talking about Fire Sheep back then, mm. where, where, you know, open access Wi-Fi was a catastrophe because that was a Fire Sheep, remember, was a, pl- a Firefox plug-in where you were able to... Oh, in fact, I'm, I'm, I'm talking on my own lines. I've got... Uh, so, some piece of the Washington Post here that I wanted to share. So w- the, the Washington Post wrote, and I've, I've edited a bit to bring it up to the level of our listeners. They said, you probably don't need to worry about public Wi-Fi anymore. Here's what a creep in a coffee shop could actually learn about you. That was their headline. From uncovered webcams to reused passwords, it's thought to keep track of I'm sorry, it's tough to keep track of how much risk our everyday digital activities actually pose. For example, take Wi-Fi networks in airports and coffee shops. They're part of life for anyone who travels or works remotely. They also have a reputation as cybersecurity risks. Do they still deserve it? To see what potential hackers could see on a shared network, we invited professionals from cybersecurity company Avast to compromise my home network with all all with my consent we logged on to the same network at the same time just like we would at a coffee shop to see how much data a bad actor with a few free tools could learn about an unassuming wi-fi user what we found or didn't find might be a relief for the coffee shop crowd after a few minutes clicking around my finance work streaming and social media accounts a vast team could see the sites i'd visited though not what i'd done there the time of day and the specific device i used in this case a macbook pro it's not nothing but it wouldn't do hackers much good if they were looking to rip me off he says chester wi- uh, w- uh wow uh wisniewski a principal research scientist at security company Sophos said that it's also also relatively reckless for hackers to sit around messing with public networks. Quoting him, that type of data isn't only low yield, it's high risk. If I can fish your password from my chair in Moldova and have zero risk of going to jail, why would I get on oh, an airplane to go to, to go to your <laughs> local Starbucks? Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah. So our, our author said, in the Internet's earlier days, the vast majority of web traffic was unencrypted, meaning anyone savvy enough to eavesdrop on a network could see everything you type at a website. And that's where I interjected our longtime listeners will all remember Fire Sheep. He said, by 2017, the balance had shifted with more than half of all web traffic using the encrypted HTTPS protocol, according to data pulled from Mozilla. Today, few legitimate sites remain unencrypted, with more than 90% of websites loaded in the United States obscured from prying eyes, according to Mozilla's data. This means even if someone using a public network to... Even... This means even if someone, I guess... Oh, you, yeah, used a public network to spy on you. What they discover probably wouldn't be very valuable. Anyway, the article finishes, focus your energies on cybersecurity chores within your control, such as setting strong passwords, saying yes to software updates, and learning the signs of a scam. And don't sweat the public Wi-Fi too hard. If a site, link, or app seems sketchy, steer clear which, of course, is always great advice.
So anyway, great question from a listener. And thank you for the pointer to the Washington Post article. I, I agree. Um, you know, uh, somebody really concerned could use uh, DNS over TLS, right? So that even the, the places they're going, even their DNS queries would not be visible uh, in the clear because DNS by default is still not yet encrypted i don't see that changing that would be it that would be difficult to change but but we could certainly uh in as individuals cause our dns to, to go through a secure tls tunnel and then nothing about what we're doing uh would, would be uh accessible someday i'd love your opinion on a thing called the wi-fi pineapple are you aware of this yeah yeah it's a pen they call it a pen testing uh, device uh although you could easily uh, use it in a coffee shop to uh, attack Wi-Fi users. I yeah, I think the the, the 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 power there would be if somebody were using a laptop where the laptop had inbound security problems. Yeah. Like, you know, file, uh, Windows file and printer sharing was, was set up to be online. Sure. Then you'd know. So it's so But one so, yeah, of the so, things so you there, can do with this is mimic a preferred network. And then have that device yeah, log into that, you. That would be bad because most Windows users have their their Windows firewall set up to be transparent right. on their local network. Right. So if it were if if someone knew who you were and, and could masquerade as your local network, then your your machine would log into it automatically, and it would ha it would have access inbound through your firewall. Now in a way that the there's somebody inside your computer right. right now there's somebody on your network on your network yeah one of the ways that you might use this in this area anyway probably in yours as well uh comcast is is the dominant uh, cable provider they put in these xfinity routers as you know that open access points public access points and uh i would bet a, a majority of people who are on the road in areas like ours make sure that their phone and their laptop if it sees an xfinity network will join it so the first thing I would do if I had a Wi-Fi pineapple is yep. spoof an Xfinity.com network just yep. to see. And you just imme immediately get connections. Yeah. And you could, pass if you wanted to, pass the internet through it, but, but you'd still be on their network. So yep. I feel like if you're really a determined attacker, there are still things you can do. Yes? Yeah. Yeah. And so the only solution to that would be to be choosing the proper VPN. Remember that you need a VPN that VPNs everything right. your computer does, not just, for example, your web traffic. You want it to completely encapsulate your network. That would that would protect you from everything we've just been talking about yeah. because it would be linking through all of your local infrastructure connection back to a VPN server somewhere, either back to your home or to you know a, a good, reputable commercial provider. You use the phrase, and I, I, I think it's a very apt to this, for this, is it's your, it's, what's your threat model? So if you're, if you're working for the NSA, your threat model is very different than, uh, than Leo yep. going down to the Starbucks. And so you have to know what your threat model is and then act appropriately. And so most right. people, pro you know, this post article is probably accurate. Don't have to do anything. I think that's true. Yeah.